Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here from the Automator and Isaiah's is uh his webcam isn't on at the moment, but he's still here. <laughs> and uh so yeah. he's helping me. I had this resizable GUI function that I had written years ago. Actually, Maestrius really kind of helped me create it and then I adapted and changed it and stuff. And we, during the last webinar, we ran into this really weird, interesting issue. So this is just a side note. So what we figured out was, and actually Isaiah and I, after the fact, yesterday, played for what, like 30 minutes or 45 minutes, somewhere in there, yes. trying to figure out what was going on. And it was still, there's just something in the file that I was, the variable that I was trying to load was causing an issue. So the workaround, which, which actually Jackie saw live on the webinar, but when we Googled it, they, that was really the same solution, right? Was to yes, it is. create the GUI, don't load it here, which is what I used to do, and then use GUI control to pass the variable to the GUI after the fact. And yes. so that negates the, the problem. Even to me, it's voodoo, because I'm like, it's the same thing, but whatever. Okay, so <laughs> the purpose of this video. Yeah. About three weeks ago, I was working in this function, and I'm like, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool is what if after I create this GUI, like if I hit this hot key right now, here's the GUI it creates. And like I said, it's uh, resizable, right? Which is very convenient for something and I have it in my library. But if I kill this, it just closes this GUI. But what if I passed a parameter when I used it like this one, and it said, when I close it, it closes the program. And I'm like, that could be really helpful. It just is a value and we'll set the default value to zero. So it's not on, but if I want it on, I can just turn it on right when I call it. What I ran into was this weird, to me, very weird thing was I first just tried passing the parameter and then using it and it didn't work. And then I tried <laughs> making it global or, or sorry, actually I did try, as I said, I said, I tried making it static up here, that didn't work. And then I tried global, that didn't work. And then I said, screw it, let me put it into a different variable. That actually worked, but I, this is where I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's like, it's actually a very common, Confusion. Yeah, it is a it is a it is a confusing problem. Yeah. So, if you're working with functions, probably you already know that uh, all the variables that are inside a function are local by default, right? So that means that any variable that you use inside the function, right, they only have the uh, information oh, yeah. when you are inside that function and as soon as you go out of that function those variables lose the information so you cannot retrieve them right now totally. yeah so that's something very uh, common right you know that probably right. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> it's all in the same just to clarify for people. Right, exactly. here, to here is the same function yeah so, so everything is the same function now here's the deal when you create the uh the control so you create the control right here, okay? You have a return right there. Mm -hmm. What happens then is that the function goes out and all the variables lose their information. So that's the reason why the first attempt that you did, like, okay, let me use the parameter. Well, the parameter was good up to line 14. After that, when you try to use it on line 25, well, you're outside of the function and that variable has no information anymore, right? Yeah, I would, maybe I would rephrase it and I could be wrong, but it's like outside of that instance of calling it, but I get your, I get what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. It, it is, it is correct what you just said. It's just that, that what, 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 what Arahaki would call that thread. So as soon as you hit the return right here, the, the yeah. thread is over and yeah, that the thread, is done. Yeah, yeah, right. So the thread is, gone and the variable loses its information and now when you call this uh this yeah. uh, label right here that is a new thread and that thread does not have any information for that variable because that variable was part of a function so basically that's the idea that's the reason why this down here didn't work at the first yeah. time because of that return right here yeah fine so, what so now let's go to the second part okay so let's go to the part in which okay I want to make, and this is on, just go ahead and try and write it. Let's go ahead and do the following static and you wanted to do exit the app, right? So this is your first attempt, right? Now, why wouldn't this work? Basically, and, 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 and I will tell you, the correct solution in my mind, okay? So global is one of the solutions, right? and it works for you. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I wouldn't recommend it is because 
it is a global variable and it's going to be an yeah, issue. Right. Somebody can change it for you without knowing those kind of things. So the best solution is a static. Now, the correct solution right now would be exit the app equals ETA and make this parameter exit the app, right? So that would be like the parameter is passed to a local static variable. That is the solution for me. Now, why do I need two different variables? Yeah, right. Why can't I just say like a static yeah. app, the app, right? So what happens is that all the parameters, those variables that you create as parameters are special variables. You cannot make them global and yet cannot make them static. Okay. And you cannot make, because they're special. Right. They're right. kind of like special parameter. So, so all those variables right here, you I cannot do right. right. Yeah. So that's the part that made you a little bit, like it confused you a little bit, right? So right. Yeah. <laughs> basically uh, what I would do is exactly what you mentioned. Like I would make a static variable that is called exit the app. And to that variable, I would pass the parameter that you just passed. And now yeah, I, I get it now. Yeah. Right, and now in this case, uh, everything is going. It, it should, and basically, hold on. This exit and, part down here would be the one that you would use down here. Yeah, yeah. Right, and, and to clarify for people, if you're not used to static, static at least. I, I, there's several things you can do with it, but but basically, it keeps the memory after multiple calls. Is that right? Is is one way to exactly. Explain. So uh, as we explained at that. the beginning, yeah. So as we explained at the beginning in functions. When you finish the function, when you hit the return right here, every single variable uh, loses its value. So when you call it again, it is empty, right? But when you create a static uh, variable, what happens is that that variable, when you hit the return down here, that variable does not lose its contents. Mm -hmm. So the idea now is that whenever you pass the... And I'm just thinking something because right now what I'm seeing is, yeah, you are passing it right here with a zero, right? So I would, um, I'm, I'm just thinking whether on the second call, if it is empty, if it is going to return back to zero. That's what I'm thinking right now. What I would say is... That's the default value, right? I would be passing... That's the problem. So this is a default. That's That's creating a default variable, right? That would be a default, right? But if you put zero, you're passing zero as the default value. Right, which is what I was saying, yeah. Right, um, but in general, what I, what the, the idea that we were just discussing is that, well, if you have a static variable, on the next call, whatever it had before is not gonna be deleted by default, okay? Yeah. Unless so you really pass something to it, to it. right. Right, it'll stay, right. Right, so whatever you pass to it, it will stay, it would be sticky, it would be static, <laughs> and that's the, the hence the, the, the keyword, would be static on the next call as well. So and in this case, on your call, you pass a one, right? And that one is gonna be saved into the static variable. Right. And for the next call, if you, on the next call, pass it without this, on this second call, that variable should still be uh, number one. And we could test it by exit the app. We could just do this. And if you run the script on the first try, it would show empty, right? Exit the app would be empty, right? And on the second call, it should actually show one but I didn't see the one, right? Yeah. Which is what I was actually afraid of because even though you're passing the second, the second call, you're actually passing a blank to it, which is funny. It, it is, oh, but that, it is. That would be the default, but I wouldn't the, see, I think you have the order backward, like the second call it only if you, when you have the one there, should it have a value? But the weird part is I never saw it have a value. No, but the problem is, here's the thing, here's the, it is not obvious. And that's the part that I'm actually kind of like thinking of. Mm -hmm. Initialize that with a zero. Try it again. I have a one, right? On the second message box, I should get a two. 
There you go. That means that the variable is static, and every time I call the plus plus, it is actually just adding to whatever variable that, that was there before. So, but when you, let's make it zero here. Let me pass it as, right. That should do the same. That's my idea. That's, that's the idea. That's what we're trying to, that should do, but that's not what it does. The problem is, and this is the issue, static and global keywords get executed before the script even starts. So basically, I should declare it static, but this should be done like this. That's what happens. Yeah, okay. It should not be done in the same keyword here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, not on the same line because this line, this static line gets executed. Yeah. No, that's what I said though, was not on the same line. Right. So let's go yeah. ahead and do it. Done after the fact. Right. Let's try it now. Yep. So now I have a number one and on the second call, I should still get a one. But that's what I meant. So you see when your variable, when your and that's the, the keyword, the thing that I wanted to tell you before. If you put a zero in there, it is going to pass a zero to it. Right. But now, what I want. no, you don't want, because on the second call, you want it to still stay no. at one. No, I don't. Okay. I only want it to stay at one if I put a one there. Yes. Uh, let I me want see. the default to be zero, unless I put something that it'll be okay. what it is. I understand. I understand your point now, but... Uh, what I thought is that, uh, and that's the idea of a static variable. The idea of a static variable is that in the second call, it should remember whatever I put the first time I, I called it. Yeah, but, but, right. You were saying that because the return issue, we had to get it down, you know, on yeah. the same instance down below, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Now, can you run it right now? And let me let me verify something because there's something that... Yeah, it is still blanks it. And that's the funny thing. Um, what I would do, that would keep, I, it, it actually automatically as it, it puts whatever is there. But in your case, okay, if that's what you need, so you want it to be false, so you don't want to close mm -hmm. the app. Um, and on the second call, it would be false. That's mm -hmm. perfect. That's, exactly what you wanted. But in my case, for example, when I use the static variables, it's just for me to keep certain type of, yeah. of information like, and, and even if I don't pass the value that it remembers right. whatever it was before. Yeah, which I understand that that's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the common use for it. And that's what I thought yeah. that you wanted to use. But basically what you want is that if on the first try, if you say true here, uh, it would actually allow you to close it. But the next time you call it, it right. should be false by default, right? That's so right. It, it should yeah. be false. Yeah, that way I don't have to pass a parameter to it. But if I do, then- Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, I understand exactly what, what you mean in that case, yeah. But basically, yes, uh, so long, yeah. now two things just to kind of like wrap up. If yeah. you, you would need a static variable, right? So in any case, that is for you to be able to take a look at it later on, okay? So- that variable, but again, I, I am torn on this because when you go ahead and call the the close command, the, that variable well, is not the same as the one in the function. So let's go ahead and do a message box right here. Yeah, right. I, I would say is be, because I haven't relaunched the thing, it still is gonna have the initial value. We the problem here is the threat who called that the right. the thread that calls this yeah uh this label. yeah this label is not the same as the function now this variable exists within the function so basically your idea of the global variable might be the correct one because you're using actually a label yeah. instead of a function that's yeah. why yeah and like i said that's what i ended up having i got it to work but I didn't yes. understand why I had to do what I did. Right. You know, so, so, so in this case, I think the global no, uh, keyword to. would be that. So, no. so if we if we try it right now, if you if you go ahead and right. So this is 
as a one. Right. right, so let's just remove one of the calls right now. Hold on. Yeah, where is that zero coming from? Yeah, because of oh, the second it, call. It finished it. Sorry, yeah. Right, so, so the second call right here is... On a one. No, no, no. So we just want to have one call. So we just want one call, not run it. Right, so we have a one right now. So it is saved as a one. But when you try to close it... Oh. So hold on. Uh, did it... The, right, it is one still one. a one. Oh. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. So it is still, this is interesting. Yeah. yeah so, so what I didn't do was, like you said, I had them on the same line when I tried the static. And right. The, the same line is the part that was actually not making it work. But it is interesting for me that even though this is a different thread, yeah. that it could still access a right. variable that belongs right. to this function. That was something that I was not right. expecting at this moment. Well, I was expecting that probably the global keyword would be more suited for this. Yeah. But it seems to me that it actually works in that case. Had I restarted it, re-ran the thing from scratch, it would have stopped it. It would have overwritten it. You know what yes. I mean? Yes, yes, it would. So exactly. cool. Yeah, that was really interesting. But, but basically, this is one thing. So static variables, the only thing that should be on the static and global keywords is the initial value of it. Okay. okay? Because that is read before yeah, everything right. starts, even, right. even before the script starts. And basically, it, you cannot put kind of like a parameter on there because at the beginning, the script doesn't it's have right. anything to that yeah. parameter. It's going to be blank, right? right? right. That's right. the reason why it doesn't work. But then if you want to pass a parameter to a static or go variable, then you would have to actually put it on its own line outside of the static keyword. And yeah. then that, that is going to work. I remember I was doing some stuff with base truth that we were doing an object, like a WinHP request. And he's like, hey, let's put this inside of this function and make it static. And so we're not recreating that object every time. So yes. I usually thought of it as keeping the value. So when I come back to it, like if I want to do a counter or something, it'll increment. Yeah, that's, exactly, that's exactly right. Yeah. But yeah. when he did it that way, it total, I'm like, oh, okay. It's not just keeping the data, that value. It can be keeping the instance of that object. In whatever, the, yeah, whatever you, you know. put in there the first time is gonna stay there uh, unless you change it during the course. Now, this is, this is one, of, one of the most common ways that I use static variables is when I do a function that does kind of like recursion. Recursion is that the function yeah, called right. itself. Now, usually what you want to do in this kind of functions is that you want to keep track on which yeah. level you're in. Right. Now, the static variable is very good at keeping which level because every time you go down a level, you update the value of the static variable. So right. call it level, and every time you call the function itself, you just go down one level, you want to keep track of that. The static variable is very good for that. And whenever you go out, you decrease the amount of the level, right? So you go down in, you go in one that you increase the value, you go out one, you decrease the value, and that static variable keeps track of which level you're in, right? So that's the most common way that you could use static variables in functions, but that what you're doing right now is another way. Like I, I pass the parameter, I want to keep track of what that parameter was, uh, but uh, this, this, uh, line right here, if it is not an if statement, what is going to happen is that every time you call the function is going to kind of like replace the right. static variable. So there is no point of having a static variable. <laughs> In our case, it does, it does have the purpose of keeping track for us to use it down here on the label. But as you're replacing it on the second call, then that is going to be false automatically. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. That was really interesting <laughs> yeah it is it is kind of like one of the most confusing things about functions uh why can't i make a parameter static that's kind of like how i would label it how why can't i make a parameter yeah. static yeah. well you can't those are very right. special variables right. and you cannot make them either global or uh the, the, the way for making it global though because there is a way of making them global is label them by ref Yes, right. So, you're so if you make it by outside. ref, yeah. you are implicitly saying that that is a global variable, uh -huh. that whatever changes you make down the, down there at the bottom is going to affect whatever 
uh, variable, it is referring to the top. But if you do not use by ref, then that is a local variable. And yeah, that's, that's basically, <laughs> oh, good. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, actually, that's the way that I learned the by ref. Like as soon as I figured out like by ref means global, then that's the only way for you to grab a parameter and make it global. You cannot make it down here on the, on the line, how, how you tried. You tried to make global exit the app, then that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. Very cool. All right, man. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching that video. And if you're unaware of it, we actually have a great intro to auto hockey course on this URL up here. We'll give you a coupon code to use for it. And I highly recommend you work through it. If you just watch this video, it's probably the right place for you to start. And on the bottom here, I have a couple examples of it helps you. Auto hockey is such a vast topic. It's really confusing on where you should start and what you should learn. I mean, there is no real right path, right? It depends what you're wanting to learn. But having the course to work through really helps you stay focused. By paying for it, you actually, you're more likely to do it. And there's a money back guarantee. So what more do you want? There's over five hours of content in this course. I think it's a great intro to auto hockey course. So go for it.